Tai sveiki visi, toliau tęsiam neredaguotą pokalbius ir kaip jau buvo mano ant save, šiandien pakalbėsim apie tai, kas dedasi Ukrainoj, pakalbėsim ne su kažkokiais vietiniais analitikais, ne Europos Sąjungos analitikais, pakalbėsim tiesiogiai su ukrainiečiu, žmogum, kuris yra susijęs tiek su politika, tiek su visuomenė veikla, tiek, tiek su kariuomenė. Vieną kartą jau su jo kalbėjom ir bus, bus malonu tai padaryti ir antrą kartą, kalbu apie Viktorą Tregubova. So, hi Viktor, I was just saying that we are not going to be talking to some European analytics, uh, analytic people, you know, or, or, or Lithuanian dudes. We're going to be talking with a guy who... Uh, by the way, I, I haven't asked last time. I, I found somewhere on the internet that you have some military experience as well. Uh, am I right? So, yes, I volunteered to conscript in our forces when the war started. No, not exactly when it started, uh, almost a year past. So I volunteered in uh, 2015 and uh, retired in 2016. So it was like 15 months or so. Yeah. Uh, that, that wasn't uh, anything like heroic, so yes, I was uh, on front line, but I was uh, there more briefly than <laughs> much of my compatriots, so many of my compatriots, so yeah, this was just an uh, interesting experience for me. Well, you know, pr- probably, you know, when somebody says interesting, usually it doesn't mean anything good, <laughs> but... Uh, I, well, I, I, no, no, it was good too. Maybe it will help me to clarify many points in my head, so... <laughs> well, no no doubt. So, uh, Victor, maybe let's start from uh, from what's happening right now and we can go forward, you know, talk about uh, some other parts uh, of, of this crisis later, but... What is the situation currently as we speak? Today is, uh, uh, let me just double check, uh, 15th, uh, you know, uh, Thursday. So what is happening, you know, in Ukraine, first of all, you know, are you alert? You know, what is the condition of your army? You know, are they on the highest, uh, you know, alert or, and, you know, you can tell, of course, uh, also how, how, what is the situation on the border, especially, you know, on the other side of the border. So, uh, Russians uh, are amassing troops not only uh, near the regions where there are actual conflict, but also on Ukrainian border in other regions. So, it's like uh, Sumska uh, Oblast, it's like Chernigovska Oblast, and so on, so on. It's, of course, it's Crimea. And uh, even uh, as far as I know, in Transnistria, there are some. Uh, something like preparations. For now, we are not on the red alert just because we know that this is preparational phase. Uh, they are still not in the uh, full compatibility, but they will reach it soon, maybe in a month, maybe so. So we are actually prepared. Yes, yeah, we are seeing these uh, just because they are not hiding, actually. They do it uh, quite demonstratively. And that's uh, what the re- what raises the question, is it uh, a bluffing or is it real uh, preparations for offensive? From our point of view, it's maybe something in between because uh, the situation can change. They can begin bluffing and if the result of bluffing will be uh, something they like or, or not, they can begin a real offensive. And yes, of course, we prepared for the result and I could say that now the maybe uh, mm-hmm, uh, our emotions are not so high as they were in well seven years ago just because we are already used to the danger we already knew that there will be some provocations and we already had in mind that oh, okay maybe they, uh, that will be some kind of conventional war uh, so ukrainian uh, society is not uh, surprised is not uh, unprepared uh, we knew something like that could happen at a time, so <laughs> we got to be prepared at least partially. And yes, our armored forces are prepared. Uh, will it be hard for us? Of course. Uh, it uh, how hard it will be depend from the use of aerial and uh, sea. Uh, component in that warfare, but still, in any case, we have to fight and we will fight. Okay, so uh, 
J j just to clarify, some people who are like, uh, you know, into military, into tracking the movement, they say that um, although the machinery is at your borders, you know, but uh, there is not enough logistics, um, especially uh, they don't see the hospitals, they don't see the, you know, fuel supplies, they don't see the ammunition coming on the railways. Uh, do you have some kind of, you know, like in, intel, uh, which is like uh, on Ukrainian press, uh, what is the situation with this side? Is that moving towards Ukraine borders or, or there is no action? Full, definitely, yes. I can tell that uh, almost certainly because I know from my sources that full was... Uh, uh, was sent to unrecognize it, occupied territories of Ukraine, and it in very, very large quantities. So uh, it's definitely yes or full. I cannot say for hospitals. Uh, maybe so. Uh, I cannot say for other logistic components, but uh, for full, yes, they got plenty of full, and uh, that's the one, uh, this, that's the thing that actually made uh, make us think that uh, they really can make some offensive. Uh, still, for now, they have no ability to well to crush all the Ukraine, but they are trying, and we see that some of their uh, uh, troops coming from as far as Siberia. So that's something, something serious because to get troops from Siberia, you have to make to pay a large sum of money just on logistics. So that's uh, maybe that's a bluff, but that's a costly bluff. Well, you know, knowing Vladimir Putin and his, you know, ambitions, uh, probably the the price is not the most important thing for him. Uh, I want to ask like a question. Um, you know, probably nobody is expecting, uh, you know, the green man again. Uh, probably, you know, you, uh, how, how does this situation compare to what you have seen in, in, in you know, the two, uh, two, 2014 uh, situation? Are there any similarities? What about your, you know, people, uh, analytical people? Are they comparing or they are not even bothering to compare this completely different story? I'd say it's uncomparable just because the situation in Ukraine is absolutely different. In uh, the 14 year in Ukraine, uh, the situation was dire. Uh, the chain of command was ruined and some people uh, was just disoriented. So we had no chain of command. We have no army actually uh, in the beginning of the year and so on, so on, so on. Now we have a uh, chain of command, army, legitimate uh, government that uh, is uh, legitimate and acknowledged as le legitimate in any region of Ukraine. So for now, <laughs> we are not so weak. Uh, the situation maybe is more likely a Georgian situation in uh, 28 year. Maybe so. Some, some similarities there uh, are there actually, but uh, not, not the 14 year, it's for sure, because we are different and the Russians are different. So it's, uh, it won't be some kind of guerrilla forces, it won't be some kind of Strelkov, blah, 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 blah. No, it could be just a full scale war and we will, we will shoot them and they will shoot us. Still, uh, truth to be told, I'm more afraid than the <laughs> actually the bluff, the actual war, because if the bluff will be successful if they will uh, frighten the Europeans or Americans uh, with uh, a conflict, uh, with a full-scale war in the heart of Europe. Uh, the consequences could be worse for us than in some actual uh, cases of military conflict. It's, it's true, but it's a problem. Well, that, that, that's a bold statement. Um, okay, so let, let's maybe ask this question. Uh, uh, what about the, like, uh, the provocations? You, you mentioned like the scenario of Georgia. Uh, like uh, we have uh, like heard that there is loads of uh, ceasefire violations in, in the you know the uh, Donbas and uh, Luhansk areas. Uh, maybe they are trying to you know provoke some kind of uh, a larger scale you know some kind of um, from your side uh, action. Uh, are you prepared for that? Like uh, is your army on, on alert that you know with a small provocation can lead to to a large uh, much you know. A uh, larger problem. Well, a small provocation uh, that will make our army to attack, it's almost impossible just because of the situation of the front line. Imagine the front line that is actually held for five years. 
a stable for a stable five years so it's actually the um it's so stable you cannot just provoke your opponent to attack no you can just uh, if there will be provocation it will be provocation like rush i don't know russian maybe bob another taxi or another uh, holiday on occupied territories and say oh that was the ukrainian nationalist who just wanted to to attack peaceful republic zone so it uh, should be something kind uh glad it's <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it uh, sure won't be the full-scale attack of Ukrainians on uh, on their troops just because uh, it couldn't be provoked without the higher, uh, higher af- Ukrainian authorities uh, authorization. Yeah, but okay, so th- th- that that is uh, that is uh, clear. Uh, are you expecting some kind of you know military um, like uh, provocation or you know like uh, attack uh, in other areas, uh, not you know the the ones that you have the stable front line, but uh, you have a much larger border with Russia, and you know they could in theory they could go through anywhere, even through you know the uh, ter- territory of Belarus. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's a problem because we actually, if we count Belarus and Transnistria, almost uh, uh, three or four parts of uh, of Ukrainian border are in danger. Yes, they can attack from Belarus, from Transnistria, from occupied Crimea, from occupied Donbas and Luhansk uh, oblast, and uh, from uh, directly from Russian territory. Yes, that's all possible, and uh, we we got to understand that. Still, we got to understand that uh, even Russian military resources are unlimited, and it won't be like I don't know in uh, Second World War, like the fronts moving from all the sides. No, it's it's impossible. Uh, but still, it could be some provocations from any possible direction, and I think that they prepare a scenario for a provocation from any possible direction, and maybe from some of them uh, in Zoom. So. Okay, so you you, you mentioned the uh, airspace, you know, um, like uh, I heard that uh, uh, people who are, you know, into the... Uh, basically uh, war stuff uh, they are mentioning that it's very unlikely that uh, the attack could come from the sea because the Russian army does not have such capabilities uh, you know of attacking uh, you know from the sea and then you know having a backup uh, from the from 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 the sea so uh, much more you know important is the airspace like uh, what are the scenarios that you know are floating you know in, in the newspapers or other media regarding the defense of airspace of U- Ukraine are you fully prepared like uh, what is the condition you know of the you know with the planes or or, or it's going to be you know some uh, heavy artillery or what well the artillery and missiles can be a problem uh, planes we don't think so just because ukraine still have some anti air uh, missiles and anti air uh, equipment uh, so it would be just uh, too costly theoretically they can use the planes but it could be too costly in uh, both uh, aircrafts and uh, pilots uh, so i don't think so but they can try missiles missiles could be a problem artillery could also be a problem but ukrainian artillerists for now actually have much more experience than the russian artillerists and it's a real combat experience so good luck to them uh, so uh, yes it could Uh, cause uh, additional problems and we are hoping uh, now that maybe some maybe NATO will help us to uh, make our air defense stronger uh, but still yeah uh, it's a problem but it's uh, this problem could be solved okay so let's let's leave NATO for a bit uh, later you know as a dessert uh, like what kind of uh, practical you know uh, preparation uh, like uh, are you preparing to especially defend like the capital the cities some strategical uh, objects for for example i i read somewhere that crimea you know they they are in lack of water supplies and they might attack you know a territory close to it and just just you know to to seize control of that uh, what what are the main goals of you know objects to be secured uh, in, in terms of some kind of provocation 
Well, it's all the same. Yeah, of course, we know that there are some choke points like uh, Crimea exit, and we know that there are some uh, points of interest like uh, our water supply in Novokakhovka and so on, so on, so on. But still, uh, as we're talking about uh, uh, too many, too, too big uh, shared border, we're talking about uh, many specific points. So we have to defend large cities, we have to defend critical infrastructure. It's, it's not uh, just one or two objects, it's uh, a long number of objects and uh, all should be defended. So, And it's not about just uh, standard warfare, it's about also cyber warfare, it's about uh, artillery strikes, missile strikes, so on, so on, so on. But we actually had some time to prepare for that, and we uh, don't waste all the time. So, yeah. Uh, the other, you know, thing that is uh, maybe more a bluff, but still it, it's kind of shocking uh, to hear, is some kind of nuclear presence in Crimea. Uh, is there any information, you know, do the Russians... Uh, are they planning to, to you know, uh, to put the weapons there, you know, some tactical nuclear weapons or, or is it already there or, you know, maybe they could strike, you know, the capital? Like, uh, is there anything uh, in Ukraine regarding that? Uh, I think they are already there regarding tactical missiles, but I think using them in this conflict is absolutely out of option. It's just not worth it. I uh, I think uh, for Russia, nuclear war is uh, always uh, off the table just because, uh, c- come on, man, uh, half of Russians, if not all the Russians, uh, families of Russian el- elites live in Europe or sometimes even the United States. So what are we talking about? Yeah, but we are to- we're talking about tactical small missiles, you know, like maybe who could affect... Uh, a ver- no such thing as small and nuclear war. Uh, So, okay, any use of nuclear weapons, even tactical, Mm -hmm. can lead to to consequences so dire that it's actually you can uh, use uh, the strategic missiles from the start because (laughs) the consequences will be already too large for you. All right. So the last question regarding the army. Uh, we sometimes hear that, you know, the Ukrainian army is much different, but, uh, you know, they're people who are emphasizing that there is still corruption there that you know still some uh, how do you evaluate your army from within like uh, is it you know is is the standard you know like the high quality or or, or there's still any problems that uh, could you know affect the the conflict I'd say corruption is not a problem for army. It's more uh, a problem for all the state apparatus. Uh, for army, there are uh, a number of problems. Suppose we want better equipment, always. Of course, we want a, a better uh, military education for our soldiers and officers, always. So that the uh, any army wants more, and more, and more. But I think that uh, Ukrainian army now is combat capable, and Ukraine have a great number of reserves. Uh, uh, yes, of course, I, vo- I always wanted Ukraine army to be uh, bigger and better and so on, but it's, um, it's solid. For now, it is solid, and we have not only our army, but our national guards. We have uh, other uh, structures that can use weapons and will use weapons, and we have uh, several hundreds of thousands of people with uh, more or less combat experience. So it's uh, the thing you should uh, actually uh, have some, no, well, uh, that's the thing we all have to have some regard for yeah of course of course I see. So, like, uh, okay, let's talk about the partners. Uh, you know, in here in Lithuania, we always, uh, when we hear something Russia, uh, and we hear something like uh, Germany, France, we are immediately, like, most of us think that you know, Germans and uh, and French. I'm talking about the governments. Uh, they won't do anything, uh, you know, the, which is gonna kind of affect them because they are uh, highly involved, you know, in the business, uh, you know, all these energy sectors and stuff like that. Uh, what are you expecting, you know, from European partners like uh, Germany, you know, and uh, and France? Uh, is there any kind of, you know, expectation there? Yeah. 
from Europeans, actually not much, because the Europeans in all the conflicts with Russia is tend to compromise, and in all conflicts with Russia, compromise is a mistake. Just because uh, the tactics of Russians is tactics of street bullies. You cannot uh, make a compromise with street bullies. If someone uh, just uh, meet you on the street and uh, tell you, uh, give me your money, you, you cannot tell him how much. Uh, you should tell him, fuck off. And that's uh, the only strategy you could actually use uh, to get with your, uh, with your money and your face unbeaten. <laughs> but uh, still, uh, in European culture of compromise, it's always how much. And uh, actually, for now, Putin is using it. Putin, for now, have some uh, wishes. He wants to be fulfilled from European Union and United States and, and Ukraine. And he, uh, for now, is talking, okay, give me that, 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 water to Crimea, give me uh, my... Uh, my terms of Donbass regulation and give me Nord Stream 2, blah, 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 and maybe I won't attack. And any compromise like, okay, we could give you that, that, and but not that, will be perceived as sign of weakness. Uh, will be perceived as, okay, that strategy works, so we can use this strategy more and more, and, if we, and after we got what we want, we will uh, just uh, <laughs> repeat and uh, get the rest. And that's how it's working. So, <laughs> absolutely, I definitely agree with you because we saw that uh, probably the only country that in like the last uh, few years that uh, knows how to deal with Russia is Turkey, and actually uh, only after they are uh, you know beat the crap of you know their military presence in, in close to the borders, you know, then they started you know like uh, talking with them because they see that there is no compromise. But yeah, like uh, you are absolutely right. You, you Europe, Europeans, Europeans are always about you know blah 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 so <laughs> tools just equated with the strategies they can use it themselves sometimes so yeah they just understand how this kind of mindset works <laughs> Okay, so re regarding the, the, the NATO, like uh, we know that this week, you know, there are quite a lot of uh, presence in Europe, uh, you know, from Americans and, uh, you know, there are some kind of talks. Uh, what are you expecting from NATO? Uh, like uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, they might help with the air defense, but like uh, uh, is that a real scenario that, you know, they might help or they might supply guns, you know, equipment or some logistics? Um, what are the expectations? I do not know. The, for us, the maximum, the best thing NATO actually can do from the thing NATO actually maybe can do is uh, helping to prevent Russian aggression in air and on sea. Uh, it, well, theoretically, NATO can create such uh, uh, terms that Russians actually won't use that component and will try if will try anything uh, to use just land component. Uh, it will make things much easier for Ukraine and much harder for Russia, so it uh, actually can help to deter the conflict at all. Still, uh, as I said, I am more afraid of political talks than of military conflict, just because in political talks, if uh, compromise will be set with Russia, Ukraine can actually lose more. And we have no guarantees that after the, the compromise will be set, you, uh, the situation won't be just... Uh, um, repeated in the next phase maybe next year or so uh, what about the, the the americans you know because we all see that you know after the you know the the, the staff changed in the in the white house uh, well the president uh, everybody is like uh, silent but uh, definitely you know it doesn't look too good sometimes in terms of uh, you know posture uh, like, uh, what are you expecting from 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 the U.S.? You know, is, is there some kind of you know because we 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 heard that there was a talk uh, between you know uh, Ukrainian president and you know the, the American president. Uh, uh, how is that perceived in your you know in Ukraine? Uh, well, uh, the statements of White House are really encouraging. Uh, still, there is a problem because for me, I uh, want to see not just statements, but uh, maybe some actions. Because uh, yes, I am afraid, and it's normal for me to be afraid because I've seen that uh, previous American administrations actually. Uh, 
make a good statements, but uh, maybe to not too many actions during uh, Georgia conflict and during uh, Crimea crisis. So uh, it was uh, for for us. It is better to to have. Uh, the lowest grade weapons that the lowest call that the highest quality works. Uh, I don't know what to expect from Biden administration. Really, I have uh, some hopes, but I'm just afraid it it is just wishful thinking from my side. Uh, well, if the president w- would be, I don't know, the, this is Mr. McCain. <laughs> I would have uh, a large hopes here. Yeah, that's so. But for now, I see that uh, the initiative coming from uh, Mr. Biden, President Biden, about uh, talks with Putin. And for me, it's uh, not a good sign, actually, just because uh, I think that it's maybe the sum of, uh, well, it could be seems to be the choice of compromise strategy. And as I tell, I uh, afraid this compromises <laughs> maybe more the conflict. Maybe if Putin uh, were just ignored uh, by United States, uh, maybe it would be better. Maybe it would be a better signal for him also. Maybe if we don't want to, to, to talk with you before you change your actions, maybe it could be better in the terms of deterrence from my side. Well, you know, probably from Biden administration, uh, it's, you know, it's it's a very similar administration to the Obama administration. So uh, that, that, that that's a worrying uh, factor. Uh, and as you said, you know, there are words, but uh, those military vessels uh, from the U.S., they are not entering the, the Black Sea already. So there are some signs of, you know, uh, talking, uh, but um, not um, basically, you know, defending positions. Uh, of course, I have to ask you because you know when we mention Biden and Ukraine in one sentence, uh, there is definitely you know th- this story about the the, the Biden uh, son, the son of Biden, you know, and and, and Ukraine. Uh, w- what is the you know how does it look from Ukrainian side? Like, uh, is it forgotten already uh, out of the press? Uh, uh, because you know there were some serious questions uh, what is he, he was doing there you know like uh, how is the story seen from ukrainian side uh what, what, by the section i uh, hear you uh could you look- yeah yeah sure, sure. Uh, no, not sanctioned. Uh, the, the story of the son of Biden that was, you know, in, in Ukraine. Is that forgotten? Is that still, you know, in the air? Or, or what is the situation with that? Well, it's remember just as uh, trends of several Ukrainian governments to uh, to be g- good for uh, uh, to Trump administration, and it's actually the worst thing that they could do. They tried to meddle in the affairs. They shouldn't uh, pick their, their noses. Uh, just never, and it's a sad thing for us. And I think that could spoil some uh, uh, relations between uh, Biden and uh, both current and previous Ukrainian uh, governments administrations. So uh, for me, it's just uh, the thing I want to forget. <laughs> well, uh, of course, you know that story did not look good anywhere in in, in the world. Okay, so uh, what I have also read that. Um, this conflict, like the, let's maybe move to the theory, why, why, why is the conflict here? And like uh, one of the arguments is that um, once Zelensky kind of, uh, because he won the election on, you know, on the peaceful uh, kind of propaganda and, uh, you know, well, peace with Russia is uh, probably a utopia. And once uh, your president started talking about, you know, the um, uh, map for NATO, basically like, uh, you know, membership action uh, plan uh, that could, you know, be proposed to to, to Ukraine, uh, they kind of uh, poked the beer, I mean, the the, the Russians. Uh, Is that, can can that be a factor of, you know, of of this conflict that, you know, Ukraine wants to join uh, NATO and, you know, they're putting effort? And uh, Russia does not want, you know, uh, NATO borders to expand, especially, you know, on Vladimir's uh, watch. 
Well, I think the problem with Ukraine joining NATO is not uh, even with Russia or with Ukraine, it's uh, with uh, some NATO members for now, just because uh, it could be only a consensus uh, and uh, some NATO members are just will sabotage it. What, what 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 members are you talking about? Because that's that's very interesting to to, to hear. I uh, well, uh, first of all, I have read uh, for Germany because already German officials made their statement that no, no, that's out of question for now. Blah 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 blah. Uh, of course, and uh, too many countries in Europe want to, to just uh, save their businesses with Russia. Too many countries in Europe have uh, Russian soft power. It uh, actually diminished in the last years, but it's still uh, active, and uh, we still got a problem from. And I think that uh, there could be a problem with Hungary and so on, so on, so on, so on. So for now, it's uh, out of question. It's not only because part of Ukrainian territory is occupied and Ukraine uh, is in active conflict uh, with Russia, but uh, I think that even uh, maybe and that even Baltic states uh, uh, could ask some questions about uh, do NATO really eager to make all they can in their defense. Well, you 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 are, you are very skeptical of the Baltic states, to be honest. Like uh, from our side, you know, in the press, like uh, at least the government is trying to make an impression that you know they stand with Ukraine, like all the way in terms of you know like getting you on board here as, as soon as possible. Uh, and also, I heard you mention uh, Hungary. You think that uh, Hungary also could be like skeptical of of Ukraine joining the the NATO? I think, uh, well, we have some uh, unfinished questions with Hungary regarding our Hungarian minorities uh, in uh, Transcarpathia regions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that Hungary could use uh, the Ukrainian NATO perspectives as a leverage to... Um, well, to influence that questions, but these questions is too close actually to Ukrainian constitution questions. So they actually want some rights for Hungarian minorities that can not only be unconstitutional in Ukrainian understanding, but can also lead to more serious problems like the next thing is there will be Russia wanted that particular rights for Russian minorities and so on, so on, so on. So, on. so it could be really destabilizing and that's a problem. Okay, well, so that's actually, you know, yeah, I have heard about this uh, minority stuff, but uh, it's, ki it's kind of sad uh, hearing that uh, from Ukrainian side, you know, it looks like uh, even the Baltic states and, you know, the, the close neighbors are would be against uh, joining, you know, NATO for, 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 for Ukraine. I don't think so. I, I, I perfectly believe that Baltic states will be for Ukraine enjoyment. I, perfectly, I think that Poland will be uh, for Ukraine enjoyment and, and many other European states and NATO states too, from Malta <laughs> to, to, I don't know, maybe even Spain. But I think that there will be some, uh, several countries that will be against it. And uh, it could be a problem just because it uh, actually there is only uh, one country to block. So, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. This this, this system uh, <laughs> has its uh, you know flaws. Uh, there is like a very strange um, like argument. Uh, I mean, uh, as I read the press, like uh, you know the the, the foreign press, uh, European, that the, the Russians are trying to you know kind of. Uh, uh, draw attention away from a Navalny problem. I think uh, that is more like a joke. Uh, how how does that seem, uh, you know, in Ukraine? That's true. Is it not a joke? Is it just a, well, I'd say, a second factor? Uh, they... Uh, they can use it, but it's not about uh, external politics. It is more about internal politics. They want uh, to uh, drive uh, attention of Russian public away from Navalny. That's uh, for me is more obvious. Not European public, but Russian public. Yeah, it could be a support factor. So. You you would say that maybe Putin is preparing for the you know the parliament election and they need you know the the ratings and they need you know some uh, well I don't know something to be proud of could that be a factor why this whole uh, stuff is is cooking? 
Yeah, I think I think so too. They're just about a sum of factors. That's not about uh, something uh, one specific. That's about uh, the overall uh, Putin Kremlin positioning on uh, on the table in both world affairs and uh, inter- internal Russian affairs. So, uh, well, as they tried to solve a number of questions with Crimean crisis, they want to solve a number of questions with uh, the current crisis. All right, so uh, let's maybe move to this uh, philosophical question, like um, uh, because you know there, there is a theory from the Russian side that um, you know the some kind of uh, Ukraine independence, like a large scale independence, and you know being a part of Europe and the EU and the NATO, is is something wrong because they they there is always you know this question that you know Ukraine is sort of. Uh, like it's it's part of Russia. How do you guys see it? Because you know it's probably a question what you what is you know written in the history books. Like in in Lithuania, we all know that you know Kiev uh, and uh, you know uh, was you know established first, and it's an older thing. Like uh, you probably know what kind of history uh, perception do they have in in in, in Russia? Uh, is is that a problem that they don't see you as a sovereign country, or or or, or this is a construct, or how do you guys see this? I think only time will heal that. Uh, just because if uh, some person, uh, well, maybe in the 80s, uh, remembered that Ukraine is part of Russia and never interested anything, uh, <laughs> anything new about maybe some changes. So what we can do with that person? I think nothing. But uh, that's pro- that's problem is that problem is not so actual as it was uh, even ten years ago. So I think that most uh, well uh, of the population in the EU and the US are already remember something that maybe Ukraine is a separate entity. And then I heard something about Ukraine and Russian war, blah 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 blah. So I don't think that's such a problem like it was before. And I think that maybe in a ten years uh, <laughs> the problem will solve itself. Just this person of time and what would you say you know because i also have read that you know the russian side they see that the only uh, you know only perspective for the ukrainian territory to be an integral uh, you know uh, fuck knows what they know what they mean by this but probably by not you know uh, taking parts away is for for ukraine to be neutral uh, you know that means no nato no yeah no you you know european union and uh, and some kind of confederation uh, status in, in within Ukraine that you know the uh, all those areas with a more uh, Russian population you know like uh, origin. Uh, h- how do you see the, this kind of you know claims and statements? Like uh, what is the vibe in 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 Ukraine? Because you mentioned before our you know start with, before the filming that it's not uh, about the geography anymore. It's more about the age in Ukraine. So. What is the you know perception, let's say, you know, on the east side of Ukraine about you know the uh, the status of uh, of the country on the west? Like, it, it, are there any differences or or or, or minor? Uh, well, for our perspective, it uh, with each year it became more and more clear that Russians do not want uh, some parts of Ukraine. They do not want separate Crimea. They do not want Don- Donbass or East Ukraine. Then they want Ukraine as a role. Uh, Ukraine is crucial in their plans. Ukraine is their first target to restore their uh, great Russia as they see it, as they will never fuck off unless we made them uh, by force. It's uh, absolutely clear for us, uh, unless there will be some more actual problems like uh, North Caucasus uh, going away or so, 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 so. Uh, for now, we absolutely understand that that is not about Ukrainian neutrality. Uh, Ukraine is a problem for Russia as long as Ukraine exists as a separate entity. And that's not about compromise. Any compromise uh, like Ukraine out of NATO, Ukraine out of EU, Ukraine blah 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 it uh, could be just a step for incorporation of ukraine into russia that's all and that's the only zero final goal and they will uh, try to reach that goal uh, and any uh, other steps would be just a prerequisites for that 
and we understand this and we got to counter it. So we just got to be ready to fight uh, well in, a, in any generation as long as Russia stands. <laughs> well, that, that's that's uh, you know sounds like from you know the medieval uh, fairy tales. So, so you you think that uh, until they get the whole Ukraine, there is no chance of kind of any kind of uh, settlement, uh, you know. And even if they would get like half of Ukraine, they wouldn't back uh, uh, back down. Of course not. Why? <laughs> it's easier to get uh, as a half uh, than to get the whole. So well, there, there is there, there is there is this theory that you know the Western Ukrainians uh, they are incurable, and like the Eastern Ukrainians they are more closer to the mentality. How, how, what kind of bullshit is that? They don't give any fuck about mentality because I beg my pardon. Uh, any people from North Caucasus is much, much far from mentality from people uh, from people in Russian villages than uh, maybe people in Finland. So th that's the truth. They don't give any fuck about uh, mentality. Russia is not about mentality. Uh, mentality of people of uh, of the North, Chukchas, Ganasans, so on, so on, so on, is uh, so far from Russian mentality as it can possibly be. And so, uh, but still Russia controls that territory. So it's not a battle for the huts, it's a battle for territory and resources. Russia don't, think, uh, don't see the situation like battle for the huts. We want to take some uh, blah, 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 who are close to us. No, they want to take what they can take, possibly. And uh, they... Uh, going into war in Syria, as they go into war in into war in Georgia, in Moldova. And if they will have an opportunity, they will go to war in Europe. So, so. <laughs> that's just a mindset. That a mindset is that if you are uh, living in a country which is shit, but which is big, big pile of shit, the, uh, your strategic uh, demeanor will be to make this pile bigger, bigger and bigger. And uh, to be proud of the size of your army and the size of your country and to enlarge that country. That's all. Uh, the Georgian conflict was unnecessary from pragmatic points of view. The Crimea conflict was unnecessary in pragmatic points of view. But uh, it's not about pragmatism. It's about mindset of imperialistic uh, uh, always uh, greedy uh, I don't know, leaders and uh, mindset of the whole country. Well, you know, that's a very, you know, like uh, straight to the point, uh, you know, you know, when usually you say it uh, from within the European Union, they say, oh, Russians are civilized. It's, it's good to hear it from you guys, because probably you, you, you feel this uh, beast uh, much closer. So maybe let's finish with uh, how to move forward from this whole thing, like, uh, Uh, what, what is the plan like uh, within you know you, you Ukrainian government like the elite uh, like the, the academical people how do you guys think of you know moving forward from this uh, uh, what, what is necessary and uh, how are you planning to, to do it well uh, from our perspective was uh, one of the reasons Russia goes to this particular crisis is that the situation uh, that we made of our previous crisis is uh, too bad for them uh, they actually see that Ukraine uh, in uh, that Ukraine become stable that Ukrainian views of Minsk agreement uh, is uh, actually bad for for Russia and they want to install new terms uh, so for us uh, actually it means that we did uh, mostly we did everything right uh, and they uh, their reaction is just uh, just because we did everything right and they are furious about that. So we just got to make things right uh, further and further. Uh, so we just got to stand our ground and uh, not uh, get into any provocations. That's the strategy for us and for from my perspective, it, it is best. I afraid that maybe that's not the perspective of some people in our government, that for sure, but uh, apart of government, we have society, we have street, we have uh, our voices and we will uh, 
we will tell them to stand our ground and we will tell them that uh, the compromise now is not uh, the options, not because we are greedy and do not want compromises, just because any compromise will just provoke Russia for further aggression. That's how it's, the thing works. All right. So I, sa- I said the last, but I think maybe the last, last question should be because it involves, you know, like uh, the neighbors, uh, the, the European Union and the, the other countries. How do you see, like, uh, what is the opinion about, you know, this um, soft reactions by most of the Europe uh, regarding Russia? H- how do you see us uh, Europeans, like European Union members, uh, as, as you know, like uh, we deal with Russia? Like, uh, what is the opinion? Like, uh, do people in Ukraine still want to get inside the e- EU or, or they already think that it's uh, it's too soft? <laughs> Well, it's a different opinions. We have no one opinion for the U.S. of all because the opinion about Baltic states or Poland is one and opinion about Germany is completely different. Uh, I think that uh, for some people in Europe, there are problem, but I cannot blame them because I was uh, such a person myself before the war started. I never believed that war uh, could happen. I believed that it's uh, well, uh, just too unpragmatic. Uh, that the, the war in the heart of the Europe is like things of the past and that will Russia want to do anything uh, of that scale just because it's uh, it isn't good for them also. But I miss the point that our Russians actually are doing unpragmatical things, uh, unpragmatical cruel things. And I think that maybe for the Germans' mindset is okay, the uh, war is uh, in a long, long past. We don't want to war and we do, will do anything to keep the world uh, from war. And uh, this mindset is good, but it's, it's a mistake. It's a mistake logical from their perspective. Uh, in, from their perspective, they should make it uh, that way, but it's still a mistake. And there is, but there was one thing that uh, uh, was completely negatively perceived in Ukraine, and that was the words of some uh, as, uh, uh, German MP, as far as I remember, about like, well, guys. We're still of Russia for the World War II. So <laughs> they, so we should uh, make peace with them just because we should uh, remember this uh, important historical lesson. And f- most of Ukraine was like, don't you think you off to Ukraine for World War II, for instance? Don't you think that Ukraine was more victim Ukraine and Belarusia than Russia? <laughs> and so you, and this was about Nord Stream, and you want to give uh, Russia some regards and to give uh, Ukraine to Russia because you are feeling sorry for Russia and World War II? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is... That that is rid- ridiculous. Like, what would you say to the people? Like, because we we have some people in Europe and you know even in the Baltic states who think that uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia is kind of uh, the safe keeper of traditional values. Like, you know, the EU is uh, going Marxist, and you know this Putin is like uh, standing for the traditional values, family and stuff. Uh, what would you say to such people? You know, who who think like that? I will say, geez, there is just. Simple thing, it's just a bullshit he is selling your brain. Uh, that's uh, the perspective he wants himself to be, but he is not some kind of traditional violent stronghold. He is just a corrupt crook. Uh, he is just make uh, make it to well uh, to to get his hold uh, on some parts of Russian population. That's all. He is not uh, about any values. The only value he understands is actually value of money. So <laughs> So it's it's good that you like this play, but it's a play. It's uh, just a scenery, nothing more. All right, Victor. So hopefully your your message will get through to the guys who still, you know, have some utopical uh, thoughts about the, the dude. So anyway, a big thanks, you know, to you for for your time. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is uh, loads of stuff you are, uh, you know, involved and. Uh, 
it's always great to talk. Uh, maybe once we're gonna have a chance to talk about something positive, because like the two times we talked, uh, bo- both times it's about the, the topic is shitty, but I mean, it's reality, so what can you do? Well, we'll live here. <laughs> so, yes, thank you, thank you for calling, and uh, I'm ready to contact next time. Okay, Victor. So, thanks a lot. Uh, f- uh, you know, f- uh, Hopefully not the last time, and I, I hope you know you guys. You won't have to do this uh, full-scale war, and you know uh, somehow this is gonna you know be solved uh, easily, but uh, unlikely. But maybe you know. Let's let's hope for the best. They diaku visiems kurie žiūrėjo tą epizodą, kaip supratot nuotaikos Ukrainoje yra pakankamai stabiliai kovingos ir jie nusiteikia atstovėti savo pozicijas. Tarsime, jiems reikia palinkėti sėkmės, daugiau matyti nieko ir negalėtume palinkėti. Ačiū visiems, kurie, kurie remiat mus, palaikot socialinės tinkluose. Nepamirškit, kad mes turim narystę, mum galima paukoti dalį savo gyventojų pajamų mokesčio. Aišku, mes turim ir Patreoną, socialiniai tinklai, tai ką, tai nepamirškit ir iki kitų kartų.